the blue boat doesn't exactly have a working bonnet cable as such but um pretty handy with a screwdriver so I don't really leave home without it So as you can see, we've got a selection of hammers here that we're going to use. We're going to explain them from most simple and generic through to your sort of more advanced panel beating hammers and dollies. First one, just an east wing claw hammer. Good for nails, pulling it in. Pulling nails, putting nails in and out. Rubber mallet, which has been modified extensively with duct tape. It's also tagged and tested. Yeah, it's safe. It's safe to use. Who's Saxon? <laughs> we got a cross peen hammer. So these are like a very generic sort of um, chippies hammer. Then we start getting a bit more advanced. This is a nylon dead blow hammer. So the actual faces you can unscrew and replace as they wear. Got a copper mallet. This is good for putting bushes in, bearings as well, because it's got a soft face. This is a Toledo planishing hammer. These are pretty readily available at most um, tool shops these days. This was my first hammer and I find it really comfortable and really easy to use. I use it all the time. I try to keep the faces in really good nick too. I've had the exact same hammer since I started my apprenticeship and it's, I think Tom will agree with me, it's our go-to hammer. Yeah, they're, they're really good. This is a Sykes pick vent um, hammer. This has got two faces on it, obviously one's square and one's round. They're both quite flat, which you might not be able to see on the camera. The difference between these two is this one's actually got quite a bit of a dome to it. So this one's convex, whereas these are almost flat or concave. This is a called a shoemaker's hammer. These are quite small. These were used for putting in quite small tack nails and stuff and for getting quite a long reach. These are also got a bit of a curve on it. You can get these in different styles, flat or con convex as well. This is a shrinking and stretching hammer. So as you can see, it looks like a griddle pan on the front. And on the other side, it's basically the same. These little squares are actually closer together to the center and further apart on the outside. So this one's just shrinking. And this one's actually the opposite. They, they're further apart in the center and they get closer to the outside. So it's for stretching. This is a 1943 bossing mallet. It's quite heavy, like really heavy. It's probably a good four or five kilos. Um, it's solid, it's, it's rock solid. Um, you'd use this for creating sheet metal or putting a pattern into something or for starting your shape from nothing. Most commonly you use it with a sandbag. And then we've got another style of bossing mallet. This is just a rubber version, trusty cook, as you can read there. You can get these from places like Melomotive um, and other sort of special stores. It's not as heavy as the bossing mallet. It's probably about half the weight. It's probably two and a half kilos or maybe as low as two kilos, but it's full of shot. So as you hit, the shot comes down as well, giving it a slightly stronger blow. This one's broken. So that's what happens when you don't look after your hammers. It's quite loose as well. The head's loose, needs a new, um, wedge put in it and yeah it, it's in it's in pretty bad nick but it's good for just flogging the shit out of something then we start looking at dollies so you can get all different kinds of dollies this dolly's out of like a very generic like starting off panel beater set it's like your cheap repco super cheap sort of set yep not much of a shape to it but it's pretty smooth still you know gives you a rough idea of what you can use and you start looking at more expensive ones. While it's the similar shape and that sort of cursor look, this is another Sykes pick vent um, dolly. This is a really nice finish on it. It's quite wide. It's also got slightly radiused edges on it. And you could pretty much use all this dolly, all the surface on it. It's been really well looked after. One thing to note between the two is obviously more radiused edges 
and then harder edges. So that hard edge will actually like fold your sheet as you start hitting it. There's nothing stopping you from radiusing that dolly and making it your own. Here we've got H, HB, HM plums. They are marked there somewhere. Very small, this is a number eight. Quite a large crown on it, on both sides. It's a good good hand grip so you can, you can hammer against it. You can see there's a little bit of denting in this one but that's not the end of the world for what it's been used for. This is another H HM Plum. This is number 15. You can see on that, quite a big radius. So that's used for getting quite small spaces. Again, it's sim very similar surface on the other side. And then you've got a Shoemaker's Dolly. So this has very small point. It almost looks like a flanishing hammer, but um, yeah, you can use it for getting into all kinds of small spots and gripping it. And then you've got almost a flat surface, a slightly convex surface on this side. So, as you can see, I just tacked all that up. I'm going to use this dolly and this planching hammer. It's got quite a flat face on it, so it'll be alright for going on the other side of this. This dolly is actually really close to the curve that we want in there, with a little bit of adjustment. So we should be able to hammer and dolly most of this up and get this to the level we want. And then we can put a, just a quick skim sand on it and see where our highs and low points are. And we're gonna just dress it from there. So I'm gonna go into the car, Zach's gonna hold the dolly and we're gonna make a bit of noise. So we've obviously just hammered and dollyed all that up. Pretty happy with how it feels. You, you sort of get a bit of a feel for it after doing it for a, lot, for a living. Still needs a little bit of work through here and just here, but the majority of it feels pretty nice. Um, we're gonna leave it for now. We're actually gonna tack the pans in just so it all holds its shape. So when we do weld it up fully, it doesn't twist and contort too much. So yeah, let's uh, get that pan back in and tack it in. It's gonna be six ways from Sunday anyway. <laughs> So I've just been through and drilled on one eighth and put the rest of these cleat codes in to pull this floor down. Uh, it's sitting in there pretty solid, I'm pretty happy with it. So what I'm actually gonna do now is just gonna pull one out. As you can see, I already started with this one. And I'm just gonna put like a six mil drill bit through the first sheet, so then we can plug weld that up. And then I'm basically just gonna go through, take odd ones out, drill them, and plug weld them up, and then the floor is gonna sit in there. I'll probably get the MIG out a bit later and just tack it along the sill every probably 30, 40 mil. And um, we might just weld in between those like we did when we did the chassis, the sill plates. So yeah, let's get into it and um, see how well this floor goes. tunnel so as you can see it is your typical flat pattern for a cone so the larger radius and a smaller radius so if we were to roll this now roll it straight through the rolls essentially what it's going to make is just a cylinder not what we're after we're actually after a cone shape so the way that we do this is we generally follow one radius so Tom's special rollers actually has a little wheel in here to follow the radius if you don't have the wheel, you can just get a bit of like 50-50 angle, butt it up against the block, and then roll it that way. It just needs to follow through. So it needs to actually curve like this to give us our small radius and to give us our big radius. So we'll throw it in the rollers, roll it up, see what shape we get, fit it off to the U, and trim accordingly. 
let's do it. Assumed. It's also a given. You know what happens when you assume? You make an ass of you and me. Yep, pretty much. Anyway. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty close. We think we'll be able to weld the difference up, but you know, we might do a little bit of trimming. What we, get, what we are going to do, though, is we're going to come square off this point and trim around just to square the end of this up. We'll suit it back in there, see how it fits. We'll probably end up doing something similar across the back as well and then um, we might bead roll it afterwards and see what pattern we can put in it so uh, yeah let's get the grinder out and trim her up Marking out the trans tunnel, take two. Action. Just cut the tunnel up. We just trimmed it off this front edge. What we actually want to do now is cut the firewall. So we're going to actually try and project, project across. It's going to be a little bit of guesswork, but what I've got is my longest lead pencil. And all I'm going to do is just hold it up there pretty close. and just get a rough line of where we're going to cut it. Like I said, this is just going to be a rough guide for us, but it's better than having no guide, which is how we do most things. And cut. actually um, got our tunnel to where we sort of need it so as you can see it's like nowhere near what we started with so I've actually sort of tipped this bottom edge a lot of holes in it, they're Clico holes um, tip the top edge as well like a little finessing in here it should be sweet we've actually finished cutting the tunnel we've marked out where the tow board is going to roughly be um, obviously we want to keep some symmetry in it so We've done everything we can to fit it as a flat, which still allows us to get the bead roller in on the edge. We want to keep a 50 mil, just to tie in with the rest of the floor, a 50 mil border. So it actually needed to be in shape, cut the profile before we can actually bead roll. So what we'll do now is probably get a scratch gauge, mark our 50 in, and then start to bead roll. Let's get it done. And cut. You did the clap. Nah, but...
Yes. Oh. Alrighty. Action. So, where we left off, we just done that tunnel. It's actually been a couple of weeks since we've done the tunnel. Um, doing tow boards now, and they have been absolutely fighting us. Not fighting us, just, I don't know. We can't really work out what we want to do exactly. So, version one. Version two. Two. So, this morning we've reverted to a bit of CAD. And that would be cardboard aided design. So essentially what we've done, made up exactly what we want to do. Just make this pan. So there's a lot of transitions, a lot of angles that we need to deal with. Like obviously it's not flat across here, it does wrap back around into itself. So now we've made this, we're going to transfer it to some steel, cut it out, fold it, bend it, put it in, get it roughly where we want it. Then we'll probably add some beads into it, give it a bit of strength and uh, start to tack her in. Let's get on with it. Folding passenger floor pan take three. Action. You would never know it was done three times. So we're pretty happy with how this passenger floor pan or tow board sits. So I've just pulled a couple of the cleat codes out, drilled out a few of the holes. I'm just gonna go through and MIG tack it all in just to hold it in position. Because we, what we want to start on now is our exhaust tunnel over here. So we sort of need that to be finalized or temporary in, so we can actually trim a bit more off it to work out where our tunnel's gonna go. So sit back and watch me do all the work. <laughs> 